we're coming to you from Bangalore CDC and joining us now is a special guest, Mr. Sriram Vedantam from Oracle. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, let us begin by talking about generative AI. There's this whole boom. We're still figuring out what we are doing with it. So what is it and what are we doing with it? Where are we headed? Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you and the team. Uh, generative AI, right? It's, it's, it's the buzzword today. All of us talk about generative AI and it's easily spoken by everyone, right? But if you step back, you know, what is generative AI? Why AI and generative AI? Basic difference, right? So AI is basically when you do uh, analytics and you predict something, right, uh, which is going to happen. Let's say, for example, uh, you want to identify a face of a person and you want to say, hey, look, this is the right guy who stepped in, so I allow access to him, right? This is one kind of an AI that we talk about. Or let's say, for example, I have tons of data and I want to do uh, analysis of those data to tell uh, you know exactly how my uh, insights are from that particular data. Let's say for example I want to predict a very easy example that most of us quote is uh, you know a, a particular price of a particular apartment, upcoming apartment in a particular area with a particular floor space, what would be that? So you are able to predict. Or let's say, for example, a weather forecasting application where you're able to tell what the kind of climate is going to be after two days, four days, right? Uh, so these are the things that you do in AI as such. When it comes to generative AI, right, the world is totally seeing it in a very different way. The requirements are different. We want to generate new information, right? When you generate something new from the things that you already have is what generative AI plays comes in picture, right? Say, for example, I want to, I have a long document and uh, my boss has sent me like let's say for example 10 page document and I want to quickly summarize because I don't have time. I just want to quickly summarize it and get to the point very quickly. That's what generative AI can do for you. It can generate a new text based on the whole series of text or document that you have seen and tell you, you know, what is the kind of uh, quick summary of that. Or let's say for example you want to come up with a, uh, with let's say for example a new image of a particular image, right? So you want to generate a new image or you want to generate a new video of a particular data of a video that is there, you can use generative AI. So generative AI is a new paradigm shift where you want to create things at a much faster pace than how you are doing it, going to do it today, right? So that's where generative AI is heading and that's where you see the boom. For example, I'll give you a very good example, right? And I use this example very frequently. You're talking to an insurance company. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Mm. So an insurance company, what happens today? You're saying, hey, look, I have got these policies. Uh, they will ask you like an IVR-based question. Mm -hmm. Number one, what do you want? You would mm. say, I have a car policy. Then you say, okay, motor policy. Then you go below and you say, what, which car are you looking at? So you are just giving question and so responding in a particular way. Mm. Now, generative AI is going to completely change things. Mm. Now you are going to say, hey, look, I, you are not going to tell him that I want this product or I want looking for motor insurance. Look, my car is going to expire. My mm. car's license is going to expire or maybe the, uh, the, the yeah. date of insurance is going to yeah. expire. Yeah. Tell me what is the best way to look at. And it's going to suggest, mm. looking at your data, mm. it's going to suggest, okay, these are two or three things that you should worry about. Mm. Now, you can ask it, okay, but what about the best premium that I can get in an optimized way? I also want to have, uh, you know, these three accidental insurance covered. True. It's going to give you a proper response, not an IVR-based response. Mm. That's where generative AI is heading to, where you can feel free to ask the bot, and get Any a customized question. response. Get a response which is very, very contextual for mm. you. That's yeah. where it is any. But this would require an AI-ready data center. So what is your vision of an AI-ready data center? See, I think the thing is like, this is the most easiest for anyone to adopt mm. and make use of it. Mm. But getting to there mm. or building that kind of a platform mm. is a humongous task. Yeah. And why I feel that a lot of enterprises have to adopt to this mm. is because, you know, all the products that they are offering today, be it catalogs, mm. you can't expect users to go read catalogs, understand the instructions and do that, right? Mm. People are looking at faster ways to get things, course, right? Absolutely. So every enterprise is looking at adopting Gen AI into their product portfolio, True. right? For that, you need to have humongous amount, amount of infrastructure at the back end. The mm. infrastructure mm. plays a play to get to this particular place where gener generative AI is. Mm. And that's where data center, be it 
on prem be it cloud data centers mm. they have to adopt new technologies we are all talking about gpus and gpus like everyone talks about gpus they are more valuable stuff. than diamonds now <laughs> they are more valuable than diamonds yeah look at the uh, look at the way uh, you know people share market I and mean, shares of the companies are true uh, multifold right <laughs> so when you talk about it the infrastructure has to be ready mm. it has to scale Mm. you cannot go with infrastructure which was a decade old or two decades old mm. with the same platform you have to ensure that you are able to scale fast elastic mm. and you are able to add those technologies which can help you grow so let's say for example in a cloud uh, platform it's not just the infrastructure that is given to the customer mm. what is given to the customer is also unique services that come along with the cloud right mm. so you talk about generative ai services as a platform mm. so the customer what he he or she gets mm. is not just okay i just get the infrastructure or i want to run this no it's a complete managed service portfolio that the customer gets mm. and then he gets responses to the kind of queries that he is asking for or she is asking for so that is how an ai ready data center can help us actually add some method to the madness as to how we deal with generative ai absolutely absolutely this is very very critical because you cannot just do ad hoc yeah. you have to plan well in advance yeah. you know getting gpus are not that easy of okay? course <laughs> it is it is as you rightly said it's it's very very costly right mm. so you have to plan ahead you have to partner with people who are able to offer the infrastructure and you come with your value of mm. the platform services that you add mm. and together it is a collaborative journey that True. you get right True. so it's not just like go ahead source some gpus and are able to pla- give the platform it's mm. never going to be like that and then there were few questions also if you would have seen in the conference today yeah. that is about the security yeah right that's the most pertinent stuff My that you're talking my biggest fear is ml the impact of that on cyber security machine learning absolutely. it scares the living day that's out of it absolutely absolutely and that's where you know technologies where security is of the most i mean i would say paramount importance for an organization because yeah. its data has to be secure right? yeah. it's all data yeah. someone also said that they are able to purchase data from outside yeah. That, yeah. Right? so yeah. data is a very critical platform for everyone to do analytics to come up with a model that yeah. can work for everyone so security layer when a cloud platform offers it offers you the robustness right mm. it offers you let's say for example we have got something called as firewall mm. that will tell you who can get mm. access to mm. the data who cannot mm. get access to the data there are intrusion techniques that are threat detection all of these play a very important role to make sure that your data is safe mm. right there are also techniques which you know make sure that even the data when let's say for example generative ai is there we talk about something called as prompts okay the question mm. that you yeah, ask to yeah. the generative ai is also true, called as a prompt true, true. we also have to ensure that the prompts are also not taken away mm. okay one more thing that i would tell you is let's say for example there is a response that is given by the mm. generative ai agent mm. right now there can be something if the security layer is not that robust and is vulnerable anyone can get in mm. and can modify the prompts and can make sure that your responses are constant are not in the way that it should be given mm. so those kind of things are very very important to be addressed to make sure that the security of the platform is paramount mm. and you have those techniques which are available mm. in your data center be it cloud be it on prem that can give you or encompass that mm. on top of the data so that you feel at the end of the day Mm. Uh, your data is secure but there are a lot of moving parts here everything is constantly evolving it's very dynamic how do people keep uh, up with all of these developments i believe there is a need for upskilling there's a need for reskilling because the current skill set there is a huge gap so how do we address that i think that's a very very valid point and what people are doing today are like lot of cloud pro- service providers they are coming up with certifications itself mm. they have their own courses that can help and there are like that starts from the basics like foundations then mm. you have like associate architecture then you have archi- so there are like various courses that are offered by different cloud service providers mm. and these are available for the masses to go ahead like free courses your, some of them are free oh. like uh, one of the courses that we offer huh. was free till july 31st oh. from a generative ai perspective oh. till july 31st yeah. so people can make use um, of those courses mm. can upskill them because sk- skill set upgradation of skill set is very very important mm. and time to time you know these have been given some of these courses have been given free for the for the public general mm. public right mm. so what happens is when you do these courses you know what is happening on the industry 
Okay. Right. Okay. See what happens is for us, we hear customers. Okay. Right. We go to customers. We talk to customers. So whatever we are incorporating is something that we have taken the feedback from the customers. Mm. Right. So customers, what they perceive is what you know people like us would uh, would come up with the products or develop the products. Right. Now the same thing when you know the educational institutes institutions are able to see mm. and incorporate in their courses mm. are able to tie up with institutions are able to tie up with um, you know industry and you know modify the courses it's going to help everyone so it's, collaboration it's gonna, so collaboration of academia yeah. and uh, industry in this and also to an extent where uh, there are a lot of these kind of courses which are available that people can take and upskill themselves mm. as i said it's all to help nation first so it's to build the nation nation building is at the heart of it Absolutely. thank you so much for making that point you in fact said this uh, earlier today when we were having the panel discussion as well and what i want to know is what has your experience been like because uh, is this your first time uh, for, at a cdc event yes so what has been your experience here at w media because this is our seventh year and we would also like to get your feedback i think uh, this is a very huge platform i see a uh, lot of attendees lot of registration so definitely it is huge and uh, i i think that lot of panel discussions that were happening at least the first of that i was uh, mm. available uh, that i could see uh, has been fantastic so it's a, it's a it's a great thing i've seen that and i would also uh, suggest that maybe uh, you know uh, you should uh, tie up with lot of things uh, where where these kind of uh, things are open for general public and mm. people can make use of it mm. see it's a learning both the ways mm. we hear other speakers we hear the questions that are coming from the audience mm. and we are able to you know see what can be a learning for us mm. at the same time whatever has been spoken over here mm. is something that the audience also gets benefit so i think it works mutual ways so i would say uh, this is this is good Thank you so much for talking to us. So it was wonderful interviewing you. Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. We will have many more such interviews coming to you from the Bangalore CDC. So stay tuned. Thank you so much.